hello. Thank you for listening. My name is Jason Newland. My website is jasonnewland.com and this is on Boring Objects. Hello. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. It's very important that you allow yourself this time to just relax. You may wish to listen to this lying down on your bed and decide to drift off to sleep to the sound of my very, very boring voice. Or you may choose to sit in a chair. Make sure it's comfortable and supports your body, just in case, again, you may fall asleep out of sheer, sheer boredom. And basically what I do is I talk about a specific topic or subject or object in these recordings. And I just talk about that particular thing for the duration of the recording. Might have just stopped halfway through, I'd go all the way through to the end. Uh... If nothing, I'm a finisher. Um, Struggle to get started sometimes, but when I do start, I like to finish. Unless, of course, I don't. Then I I don't finish. Depending on what I'm doing. Um, Some things are never finishable, are they? For example, building my website. It's never going to be finished because I'm always recording new podcasts and new recordings and therefore um, it's never going to be complete because when I've updated the website with the latest audio recordings that I have uh, produced then the next day or whenever I produce a new recording Uh, I'm like, oh, I need to add that to the website. It's almost as if the website's never finished. It's never complete because I need to add this new one. And then I think, oh, it's complete now. That's good. It's all done. Then I go and record another one. I say, oh, I've got to add that. And I don't mind... Just sometimes it'd be nice to sort of look at it and think, well, that's now done. But it's never going to be done. I'm a little bit behind adding the recordings of the last couple of days onto there. So I need to do that. In fact, I'm just going to have a look. What is the, what's the last one I put on there? Not that that's really that important, but uh, there's probably quite a few that I need to add. The last, most recent one on the website is Let Me Boy to Sleep 763, My Childhood Home from the 6th of November. So yeah, I'm a little bit behind. Oh no, it's not. I lied. It's Feeling Better, number 766, Let Me Boy to Sleep, the 10th of November. Yeah. So I'm a little bit behind, you could say, on that. But it's okay. I mean, I've been doing websites for some time now. So I suppose, you know, but I'm not going to talk about websites today. I'm going to talk about 
I wish I could talk about benches. I want to talk about benches. So, I mean, benches. When I talk, when I when I say the word benches, I think of a something that you find in a park, like a park bench, as as opposed to a a roof bench. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I suppose some people listening to this may have a bench in in your garden the weird thing about benches wooden benches is if you went into someone's house and into someone's living room and there was a choice of a chair a settee or a wooden bench You'd probably choose the settee or like a normal chair because wooden benches aren't really, you wouldn't class it as being a comfortable thing to sit on. But when you're in a park and you've been walking around and your, your little tootsies are a bit tired from all the walking and you sit down and you rest your, your big fat bum on that wooden bench doesn't it feel nice doesn't it feel so ever so restful ever so relaxing as if you can find one that isn't covered in uh, bird poop but sometimes you just gotta choose I mean I think with most of the park benches that I, I was going to say, have a relationship with, I don't I think that would be weird. Uh, splinters galore, I imagine. I'd that I I've seen. I sit in park benches. I sit on them rather. Sometimes it's a case of just choosing which side is the least fresh of. Uh, bird poo you know sometimes it's just it might just be a stain on the wood of many years of seagulls and pigeons using it as a toilet there's a nice place to sit to eat anyway and sometimes if I've if I've got a jacket on I'll perhaps put the jacket down and sit on the jacket or other times maybe if I've got some kind of something to wipe the the bench with I might use that and then of course there's those times when it's been raining and the bench is maybe nice and kind of clean and you can sit there and you can eat your dinner or your lunch or back lunch a sandwich or maybe a burger from a burger establishment of your choice or maybe not of your choice but maybe the closest one to the park Uh, we have a wimpy where i live near the park there's also was those what it's a place love thy burger or something it's called and you can choose your own burger i've never gone in there i've never i've never really thought of burgers as being uh, an artistic event in my life where or that I need to micromanage the making of a burger. Just, you know, I'll order a cheeseburger or a quarter pound of a cheese and deliver me the quarter pound of a cheese when it's cooked. Uh, I don't really want to be involved in the production of said burger, if I'm honest with you. Um, just in the same way as I've seen on 
the internet and some TV documentaries. There's some restaurants where you go in and you end up cooking your own food. I mean, what's that about? I'm not going to cook my own food. It's bad enough if I use the public toilet that I have to wipe my own bum. I don't have to cook my own food. But there you go. Each to their own, I guess. But, uh, oh yeah, park benches. There's a few in the park. In the park that I go to, there's, as you as you go in, because there's two big gates to this park, and there's actually a castle in it, in the park. And as you turn, if you look to your left, there is, it's not a normal bench, as in, you know, uh, four legs. Or do they have more than four legs? Do some benches have six legs? I think they might have, you know. Because if they're long, they might have six legs, maybe, I don't know. I've never really looked at the legs with that much interest. And I'll be honest with you. I didn't know I was going to be talking about benches. Wooden benches. I didn't know that was going to happen. Kind of in my life. Um, It's hard to prepare for really. You know it wasn't. It's not been a goal of mine. To talk about wooden benches. It's not been on my bucket list of things to do, you know, skydiving, seeing all the wonders of the world, meeting the Dalai Lama, talking about a wooden bench, you know, it wasn't quite on that list, if I'm honest. So, but this bench in the park on the left hand side is almost a built into the wall in a kind of semicircle, um, benches either side of the semicircle. I'm probably not explaining it very well, but I can't think of a better way to describe it. Uh, if you're facing where the benches are, there's actually it's more like two semicircles with a bit of concrete in the middle, and then another semicircle. The two um, with a bench built into the semicircle. Yeah. That's as. I think I explained that as well as I'm probably going to. Um, I, I quite like sitting there because it's close to the entrance which means I haven't got as far to go to get back out of the park it's not that I'm worried about getting lost I just I'm just very lazy and I mean there's no point sitting in a park eating a burger and then walking a long distance to get out of the park again What's the point in eating fast food if then you're going to exercise afterwards? That defeats the object of eating fatty fried food. You know, it's like, no. So, I try and sit as close to the entrance of the park as possible. So, I quite like that bench. Plus, there's a little bit of people watching, I guess... I'll eat my burger and they'll see a few hundred people walk past me during that uh, yummy time of delicious eating. Normally I have a, a milkshake as well. They used to be called thick shakes in McDonald's back in the 80s. But you didn't know that, did you? It's true. It used to be called thick shakes. Then they changed them to milkshakes. Well, they were always milkshakes, but they used to be thick. 
They still are thick for McDonald's. But I I tend to go to the Wimpy because I just prefer their quarter pounders. Um and it's very rare, I don't don't go very often. Although I'm thinking of going now because I'm hungry and salivering. Is it salivering, salivating? Basically dribbling, dribbling all over myself. But wooden benches. There's quite a few in the park. There's, I reckon... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Probably just in the first layer of the park. Then there's some a little bit higher up. Probably think three benches. Then down there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Probably another ten or so. Benches lower down. I remember la- walking past one one bench. It was a wooden bench, and I was on a date with a lady, and I held her hand, and she and she pulled her hand away from mine. A very busy park, very busy. Lots and lots of people there. Now. I didn't realise at the time, but I'd held a stranger's hand. I mean, she she was off looking at some flowers, and there was another lady next to me, so I held her hand. And uh, after about ten minutes, she sort of like, get off, get off. It's like, oh. But by that time, I was actually at, back at her house, and I was uh, helping her un- unload the uh, dishwasher. So that was a bit weird. But but this this lady was kind of weird, really, because the other stuff didn't happen. Really, the I was on a date, and we'd already kissed earlier on in the date, and it was someone I knew. I knew her, I'd known her for a while, and we sort of started, decided to sort of get it on, you know, get it going, kick starting the love machine, you know, that basically getting, I, I was the love machine in that scenario, and she was the one kicking me, and she, we, um... I held her hand in the park and she pulled away. Oh. I knew then that maybe there was something not quite right going on. I had an inkling, if I'm honest, that maybe something wasn't working. Now, I'm not sure if it was before or after uh, we went into an electrical shop because we were going to go to the cinema but the cinema had already started the movie and the next one wasn't for like three hours. This was on a Sunday and so we she said she needed to go and get some light bulbs and I thought to myself That's a, <laughs> that's a romantic thing to do, isn't it? Buying light bulbs. So I thought she was really into me. And she said she also needed to get to the dentist. Um, but it's a Sunday, so she can't really go in there. And I didn't really know why she was talking about the dentist, if I'm honest. It's not open on a Sunday. Why Why did she mention it? But uh, she, she went, we went to this electrical shop. She went and looked for light bulbs. 
I'll be honest, maybe I'm not the roman the most romantic person in the world because I couldn't get excited about light bulbs. So I went and had a look at some of the other stuff like the microphones and you know, stuff that interests me. I thought I'd just have a little look around while she did that. So I was looking at some of the stuff. Decided there wasn't anything that I really needed or was that interested in. So I'm on the way home, walking up the hill, and my phone rings, and uh, it's her on the phone saying, where are you? And I forgot all about her, I just walked up the hill, I just left the shop, I forgot, (laughs) I'm not sure if that went down very well, Um, but I didn't, it wasn't purposeful I just I'm so used to doing things on my own that I just was in my own little world and I was I left the shop and I suppose if only I'd had more interest in light bulbs perhaps we'd still be together but I remember I think actually we were walking down through the park to get to the electrical or maybe we were walking up through the park I just had this memory of walking past a a park bench I just remember that I remember the exact bench because there was flowers there and there's also I think someone's sitting on the bench and I, I held her hand and she pulled away. She didn't scream. Um, you know, she didn't spit at me or anything. It was it wasn't anything we- too weird, but it was embarrassing for me and also pretty funny for anyone that saw it. And there was someone watching, and I'm sure they were laughing. And then as we're walking away, I could hear them on their phone saying, oh, you should have seen this man. He, he tried to hold this lady's head and she pulled away and told him, get off me, get off me. Who are you? Like, it's like... It was, it was not good. And then we went back to... We went to the video store that's back in the days when uh, blockbusters were still alive and we got this is a long time ago this is back in 2010 I think 2011 January 2011 I think it was so it's 10 years ago over 10 years ago and she said, oh, we, we got a video out or DVD out and it was the Karate Kid, like the new version with Will Smith's son and Jockey Chan. And I've never watched the film since. We only watched a bit of it. She started playing with my ears, which I thought was either weird or a really good sign I wasn't sure and then it was time for me to leave so I don't think I had the correct ears for her it was very unusual one of the weirdest dates I've ever been on and I've been on a few And what made it weirder is we, 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 I thought we got on really well. And we were talking on the phone nearly every day leading up to that Sunday. And we knew each other in person, but had never actually been out in public. We, you know, never been out socially. Just, I used to, I met her at a place I used to meditate. And... It was a public library. She didn't meditate. She was reading, but I used to, I used to balance on the top of the bookcases, and 
do a bit of yoga, you know, as you do. And they were wooden too, just like the uh, wooden benches that for some reason I've not mentioned for a while. She had the smallest flat I've ever been in in my life. It was absolutely tiny. And she gave me, for lunch, she gave me soup and some bread. I I thought, well, have have I... What do you do for a living? Are you a a prison officer? That's what I thought. To you know, soup and bread. That's not a dinner. That's a starter at best. Soup and bread. I was a bowl of soup and bread. How is that going to be? What's that going to do for me? That that will keep me going until we get into town. Until we get to McDonald's. But um. That was just what she liked to eat. And I'm... I can eat soup when I'm not feeling particularly well. You know, soup can be very comforting. I love tomato soup. I really do. Um, Sometimes I like to have crackers with my tomato soup. Like, you know, the little crackers with a bit of butter on and the hot tomato soup melts the butter oh it's nice and it drips all over the top of the soup and it's very yeah I do like it but I I quite like bread as well but or toast toast is nice but sometimes after going through the whole process of heating up the soup I just don't have any more energy for making toast. Yeah, but I do like a bit of soup. Not really a big fan of the oxtail soup. I'll drink it. I mean, what else can you do with it? You know, (laughs) grouting, you can't grout some tiles. I can't, I, I don't mind oxtail soup. I just never liked the sound of it just the idea of an oxtail being turned into soup didn't an ox's tail you know what I mean like uh, didn't didn't like the sound of it didn't don't mind the taste but it's one of those things that I'd have as a kid because I had no choice you know when you were a kid you pretty much just get what you're given and have to kind of make do um i as an adult wouldn't choose oxtail soup i like chicken soup i like tomato soup but i would say i like them for different reasons I like chicken soup because I like chicken. I like the taste of chicken soup. And I like tomato soup because I like the taste of tomatoes. The tomatoes soup, it's it's nice. So there's two different reasons, two different tastes. But I think chicken soup, I mean, it's a lot thicker. uh, And it's probably, in some ways, I'd think it's perhaps more nutritious than a tomato soup but I do love a bit of tomato soup I really do I've never drunk tomato soup sitting on a bench a wooden bench before I thought about getting a wooden bench for the garden because we've got a shared garden out, out the back where I live but then other people might sit on it. And it'll be mine. Because I, I bought it. I paid for it. It's my bench. I don't want other people sitting on my bench. It's mine. <laughs> so. Uh, what if someone tries to sit next to me? If I'm sitting out there. And they try and sit next to me. That'll be awkward. 
It would be very uncomfortable for them when I start shouting, Get off my bench! It's my bench! Yeah, what if I went out there and there was two people sitting on the bench and they said, Oh, it's okay. There's room in the middle for a little one. Why do people only ever say that to big people? And why is it always someone that's sitting on a chair, like a settee, a sofa, and there's two of you sitting there, and the other person says to the biggest person in the room, Oh, come sit here. There's plenty of room for a little one. And I have to say, no, there isn't. There is plenty of room for a little one, but you're not a little one. So you're going to have to sit somewhere else. Because I'm not a little one, which means I take probably three quarters of a settee, of a sofa. The only reason the other person's sitting there is because they are a little one and they can just about fit on there next to me. No room for another big one. Only room for one big one on a settee, and that's me. So there. My bum actually sits on two two seats. I can sit on both. But I don't know. Why am I sat by? I'm single, by the way, if anyone's interested. Um, so, um, wooden benches. I used to sit on a wooden bench on the seafront when I was about 18. And I used to write. I started writing my journals back then. And I did it for about 25 years. Don't do it anymore, but I did it for quite a while. I used to write journals and like a, uh, yeah, just like a diary really. But also writing not just my feelings and what's happened, but also uh, ideas and, you know, stuff like that. But I haven't done it for years and years and years. However, I do the uh, let me bore you to sleep, and it's kind of a similar thing, really, but it's just verbalized. Talk about what's happened and, you know, my dreams and aspirations and the odd story, etc., etc. And I used to sit on this, on a, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a particular. wooden bench that I would choose but I would sit on the wooden bench uh, on the seafront on the promenade and just write I have a A4 pad and a pen I always find that's useful and I would I quite like those felt pens not, not like felt tip pens that you draw and colour in stuff when you're a child but the felt tip kind of the felt pens that you buy that are I don't know they, they're really good for writing with and I used to write for hours sometimes I'd read I'd read I'd have a book I think when I was about 16 or 17, 16 I think, I had uh, the life story of uh, Sigmund Freud and I read that. Uh, I think I also read the History of Time, is it, from uh, Hawkins and... I didn't understand a word of what he said. You might think, oh, he was only young. You shouldn't give yourself a hard time. He was only 16 or 17. You shouldn't give yourself a hard time, hard time, JJ. You know, be kind to yourself, be gentle. You didn't understand a word of it because you, it was... Uh, it was beyond your years. It wasn't something that you'd understand about wormholes and black holes and time and stuff. You was just a teenager. Well, the reason I didn't understand it because it was a German edition. It was in German. I didn't... So, there you go. Um, it took me three weeks to realise. I gave it a go, though. I'm not a quitter. 
apart from when I quit, I do quit quite often. Constantly, constantly giving things up. But other than that, I'm not a quitter. And other times I've sat on benches. I used to sit on a bench at the local cemetery when I moved to Stratford. Had a cemetery behind us. It was an old cemetery. There was not, you didn't have access to it because I suppose a lot of the people that had the plague and stuff back then. But they had a new cemetery and I used to go in there and sit down on the bench and have me pack lunch. Have a little picnic really. That was nice. Very quiet. Very quiet. Other benches, wooden benches. Um, I've sat on a few different benches over the years. Different parks. Various different places. Uh, Even train stations, wooden benches I have. I sit down on them. Although a lot of the wooden benches have been replaced with metal benches instead. And they're not the same. They're a little bit, a little bit slippery. Especially when they get really wet. They are really. I mean, they have holes in them so that they don't get like puddles anymore. Um, not all of them, but you know, the newer ones generally have holes in them. Um, but you can slip off them a little. Bit. It's quite easy to slip off them, especially if you've greased yourself up first as well beforehand easy to slip off them I'm trying to think of some other wooden benches I tried to sleep on a wooden bench a few times um, always went back to the bed always went back to the fast you know good old bed like well why am I trying to do this why don't I just go just, you know I don't just sleep in the bed. What's the point in park benches? You know. So what I did is the next day I returned the bench back to the park. Difficult getting it through the window. Couldn't get it through the door. It's too long. I'm trying to think what other benches I might have been on. No, that's it, I think. I think it's all the wooden benches that I can recall off the top of my head having sat in. Yeah, I think that's it. Hey, what's wrong with my ears? Why? I mean... She played with my ears for about five minutes and then said, oh, maybe it's time to leave. Can you tell from someone's ears something about their character or their intention or can you tell the future by someone's ears? It's like tea tea leaf reading, but ear, earwax reading or something. I don't know. I wonder what she was looking for. What secret was she searching for with my ears? Maybe when she was younger, she, maybe one of her first boyfriends, she played with their ears and, you know, he he had some kind of weird ear fetish thing and she, and he like got excited and, told her that it was the most amazing experience ever and since then she's she thought that was a way of making making another person feel amazing by flicking their ears but having my ears flicked by her didn't um and squashed it just didn't you know just pulling at the lobe literally pulling them away from each other like look Look like Dumbo. Ha <laughs> ha Like, it's not funny. It's 
It's not funny at all. Alright, I don't know what it was. But. I've not got nothing against having my ears touched. I touch them myself sometimes. But. Yeah. I wonder if it's some kind of weird. Well, not weird, but just a, a new kind of way of telling the future. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe she'd run out of ways of trying to tell the future. And that's why she asked me out on a date. Because she just want, thought, well, I've tried the crystal ball. I've tried the tarot cards. I've tried the Ouija board. I've tried all that stuff. I've tried astrology. I know, I'm going to try this man's ears. If I play with his ears for five minutes, maybe I can tell the future. There's got to be a way to tell the future. Maybe I was our last hope. I don't know. Maybe that's why she got so concerned when I walked out of the shop and forgot about her. Because she'd had that plan. What about his ears? Just... You can go, but just leave your ears with me. Just leave your ears here, please. Like, no. I need them. So, anyway. Other than um, that, park benches. Yeah, I've had some okay times on park benches, but I just find it funny that in normal circumstances you wouldn't choose a park bench to sit in for comfort but they are quite comfortable when you're outside for a period of time and that's probably all I have to say on the subject of wooden benches and I hope that this was very educational and very boring. So thank you for listening and goodbye, bye, bye, bye. Until next time, see y'all.